What's up? What's up? It's currently 7:05 right now. We got Jim with J115 the Hawk. As I was saying earlier on during the show, we're gonna be doing an interview again. Finally, finally, we have Nikki Green in. What's up? Hey, what's good, everybody? Okay, okay. So you, uh, I've talked to you a little bit about here and there and uh, and what you're uh, what you've been doing. Um, but you're saying that you've moved to a few different cities and doing your music, so uh, you haven't really been into the studio much lately. Um, you want to kind of get in detail with that? Like, where, where have you been uh, city-wise? Uh, currently, right now, recently in the last six months, I spent some time in Newmarket, um, Brampton, North York, Hamilton. So, yeah, that's four right there. That's making, that's making it a little bit harder in general just to, like, see my team and my, yeah. my engineer. Um, I'm not really about getting into the booth with kind of random people. I'm, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to my sound, and me and my guy, we have something working on it together right now. Yep. That's the way my sound sounds already. That was a lot of sounds, but um, <laughs> but yeah, just trying to keep it keep it in house too. Like I don't want to just find some random people that know how to use Fruity Loops or um, any engineering program, and then they're just like, yeah, here's thirty bucks an hour, come in my booth, and yeah, you know, I'll give you something that sounds decent by the time you're done. So yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Uh, you, if you want to uh, just tell the listeners to really know who you are, just, just uh, I, I guess explain like who you are, where you're coming from, uh, music wise. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, it goes by uh, Nick Green, aka the Potent Prince. Um, really, I'm from Barry, I guess you could say, but uh, not really my scene out there. I just kind of grew up there. It wasn't really, it wasn't really my style. I like to keep it Toronto more or less. That's where I'm born. You're only born once, right? So, yeah, man. I'm just a, I'm a hip hop artist. Um, Toronto, I like to represent as a city, but I am from Barry. Kind of unfortunately, sorry to diss you, Barry. Seven to five. <laughs> Uh, y'all gotta step your game up out there, and then maybe I'll start repping a little bit more. But uh, <laughs> that's just that's just the lowdown, man. Just keeping it real, like smoke my trees. Um, anything else y'all wanna know? You can ask me for real too. So what do you love yeah, the most okay. about the Toronto hip hop scene? Um, the style. Everybody out there keeps up to date, like 100%. Like that's the one thing I notice when I go to Toronto. Um, with everything, you could even like from your music. It's some of the weirdest hip hop I'm hearing out there in Toronto, but. It's cool because you can tell that guys are getting inspired by the new stuff that's coming out and they're trying to kind of make their own sound with that, but yeah. it's a little different. Like I got my boy, um, shout out to Just John, he just dropped an album and it's like the weirdest, craziest stuff I've ever heard. Like weird in a cool sense though, like like weird like, oh this doesn't sound like your average like shook ones, mob deep. Like, yeah. Like it's crazy synthesizers and like... That's what it is, right? Like yeah. everyone's trying to do something different. At that point in time, you're gonna you're gonna hear something completely different all the time, right? So, so what music is, right? Like it is constantly gonna be changing. It's the kind of I guess revolution of it all. Uh, but yeah, that's what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. Like like I said, man, just the the constant change and the, the crazy uniqueness in Toronto. That's most definitely my favorite part. Of, like you can, like I said, man, you can wear some of the weirdest stuff out there too, and people will look at you like you're normal. So like that, that's a big thing too. I'm a big fashion guy. I like to wear some kind of weird out there kind of stuff sometimes. And you know, and you go to little places like Bay with a bucket hat on sometimes before last year. People look at you like crazy. Yeah, people look at you like, what's this guy wearing, man? Like why has he got like just crazy stuff? You get some nasty yeah. comments, but Oh wow. Yeah, like unfortunate, but haters, you know, they're always gonna be there. You can avoid them. It is what it is, it's needed. <laughs> Right, but uh, yeah. So you have one, have one song you're gonna play first. Uh, you you wanna kind of explain uh, like when when did you record that? Uh, I can't really say the name. Is it? I'll, I'll say mother mother F is what I'll say mother F. Um, so you have a video for it and such. Yeah, when did you record that and uh, and release it? Um, that was done actually just over a year ago, last March. Um, I got the go ahead on starting this project. Um, it was for a record label called Funk Volume. They got like Hobson, Dizzy Ray, Jim Benton on there. Um, and they do a contest every year just for good exposure. Um, last year I had an opportunity to open up for Dizzy Ray. That's kind of why I was mostly into it. I'm a yeah. big Dizzy fan and I feel that would have been a good crowd to kind of jump with to like get your name out going. But uh, yeah, the, the lowdown with this is you just had to pick a beat. Um, they provide you like 10. You had to pick a simple lease from them, record a 16, record your, um, record your video. If, you, if they dig it, if you get 250 votes, sorry, then you get on to the next stage, which is like top 25. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to make it to the top 25. After that, didn't happen. But that's cool. It got me It got me a huge amount of exposure. Yeah. Um, the views are still climbing on that video. It's at like 15k, I think, right now. So that, that's cool. Dropping that's what it's all about. Yeah. Day, right? Yeah. Exposure. Yeah, most definitely. Like, uh, 
I, I had I had a limit in my head like if I could hit 10k, that'd be sick. If not, whatever. Like you try in the next one, right? But I exceeded my goal, so yeah, that was a big thing for me. Like fuck the contest. Oh my bad, but we had the contest. But uh, like yeah, the explosion was sick. I lined up mad shows after that and just made huge contacts after that too. So yeah, check it out, mother. Ah, just playing. But, yeah. <laughs> What's up? It's currently 721 115 Baja, Jim with Jay, listening to the best hip hop rap in RB and Hamilton. Right now, we have Nikki Greens in the studio. Just asking us some questions. No getting a lot and whatnot. Uh, so, t tell us more about yourself. I've subconsciously always been into music and I've kind of always known that I wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, just my pops, he was a musician. He still is a musician, so. Um, so I've always been around like the, the live performing scene and I've always been around that growing up. <laughs> um, what got me into it personally is I had an injury in like 11th grade or something like that, so I was like 15, 16, dislocated my shoulder, Yeah. and like I said, I've always been into hip hop and music and stuff, but can never find those guys that could like seriously spit like the kids are listening to, or like, like Wu-Tang and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, so I'm working at Lids, and my boy uh, Philly Blunts, he's on my team too, Lifted Achievers, he, he just started spitting like, like raw bars like right there. And I was like, man, like, that's exciting. Like, I've never seen anybody just do that. Like, like crazy stuff, like, got a split from both hands. You can call me double jointed while I'm bagging these grams, something, something making the coin flip. And I was like, my mind just blown. Like, man, I want to yeah. be able to do that. All I can do right now is sit up anyway. Might as well start writing. So yeah, like, biggest inspirations were like, the people that I knew, like, like everybody says like, oh, I look up to Eminem or, whoever, like, they're famous artists, but my biggest inspiration was literally the people I knew, like, watching my pops on stage, um, to hearing my boy, like I said, just spit it raw right there in the lid store, to my other boy, Spenny, he was, he was ripping freestyles at the smokers part in high school, so, like, yeah, my, my inspirations were watching my friends do it, and then just me wanting to, like, be involved, you know, like, yeah. when you're skateboarding, you see a friend land a trick, you want to land it right after, so, that's what it is, it's, it's the same thing, like, you just want to keep up with the scene and keep involved with, with the homies that are doing it, for sure. And what, what kind of music did your dad play? Uh, he, dad? yeah, he's, uh, he's into the, the rock and roll, long hair, hippie scene type thing, um, <laughs> yeah. he actually cruises around with, um, Burton Cummings. I don't know if anybody really know about him in the hip hop scene, but yeah, I've heard the name here and there. Yeah, yeah, like uh, American Woman and stuff yeah. like that. So no, he's he's serious with it. He does his thing. He, he keeps real with it too. That's how he's making yeah. a living. So and is, there, is there any other? Like, what, what kind of genre of music did you grow up uh, listening? I listen to everything. Like, you, can, you can throw me everything. The only stuff I don't really understand yet. Um, a lot of people might get mad at me for this one is that EDM, like the electronic <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. Like, I don't Everyone's know. Everyone's into that now. Yeah, you must gotta be doing like a lot of drugs to like really <laughs> figure that stuff out. Cause I cannot figure it out. Like, I can't get into like. I understand instrumentals when there's like yeah. a beat and yeah. like how people can just vibe with the instrumental. Yeah. But I don't get how it's an album. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like yeah, that's what people are into these days. That's what's like really hot now. Honestly, like, yeah. a lot of yeah, clubs and all there. That that's what they, they're looking they for. They just want to be straight EDM. Yeah. It is not like that's the only thing I can't really find my enjoyment yet. But I'm I'm really open minded. So if someone shows me, like how to enjoy it. Yeah. Maybe throw me a bunch of MDMA or something like that and I'll learn, but like, until <laughs> oh then, like, God. I have no idea how I'm going to figure out how to get into that. Um, no, yeah. it, was a, it was a big difference, man. Like, when I was growing up, I remember my pops throwing me uh, the Nirvana album and, like, Marilyn Manson albums and wow. stuff like that. Yeah, so, like, it was weird. It was a weird transition. But then again, he threw me the 50 Cent Get Rich or Die Trying album when I was, like, yeah. 11 years old. So, then how did you make the transition to loving hip-hop then? Um, really, like... It was again just the realness seeing like my homies like actually doing it. Like I'd be listening to like guys like Alexis on Fire and like hardcore metalcore bands, which I think is sick to listen to because they structure music like with like really good patterns and you don't recognize it. Like hip hop, like we were talking about earlier, when kids are freestyling, they just say whatever's off the top of their head. There's no structure to it. Where when you listen to rock music for so long, you know they have their verse and then their chorus and then their little bridges and then back to a, another verse. Where in hip hop, you don't really pick that stuff up, so I think it kind of helped me mentally structure when I'm gonna make music with yeah, hip hop. Like you have uh, the track that I played uh, not so long ago, uh, but is that the first track that you ever recorded, or is there another track that you uh, 
that you've had out before or like recorded just here and there on a phone or something like well, when did you first uh, get into the studio uh that first time i got into the studio was when i actually lived with my boy spenny we started messing around with some local studio back in bay called mm -hmm. h money and uh it wasn't really run like a studio how you should have been doing your thing like going in there consistently recording and whatnot if you had a chance to record you got your chance so like i kind of got to dip my toes in a little bit then when i was like 16 but um that was my first like official release like a first like this is nikki green like you can search me up on youtube find me here like that was that was the first legit recording in the studio you know like back to back days um waking up early for it putting in a lot of hours in there. It wasn't even really a studio too. At the time, it was just like my boy's closet. Yeah. So it was like, shout out Simple Slim on the boards. He's crazy, man. Like he sounded, he made me sound sick just chilling in the closet, so. Yeah, you gotta start somewhere, right? And then it doesn't thing. matter. If you can do it right, then uh, you do it right. Oh yeah, <laughs> that, like, whatever, whatever you gotta do to get the job done, honestly, is, is the yeah. the mental that you have to have right now. Cause a lot of people just wait for opportunity to like come to them. But, it doesn't have like you're not gonna go record with Dre yeah. after your first track. Like you have to put in years of closet recording and trap yeah. style recording. <laughs> and that, that's just like it's, it's another way to kind of uh, cut out the guys that aren't really gonna really gonna do it right. Like there's there's guys that I don't know like that from from hip hop Canada or this and that that I've talked to and, and they've said like I didn't get my first paycheck from doing what I'm doing, whether it's rapping or, or manager or this and that. Like I didn't get my real first paycheck from the government after like 10 years like, yeah you have to continuously work like yes i got money here and there from doing like events or whatever but he's like i didn't actually get my first paycheck until like 10 years after i'm like that. like you have to you always have to be there you can't can't wait for opportunity if you see opportunity you have to go for it right and that, at that point in time like i guess it's a perfect time to pull up you're trying to go to la um so so there you go like you see yeah. opportunity you're going for it right so, so talk a little bit about la and what, what's going on with that LA, oof, that's like, that's a dream come true, man. Honestly, um, I've just been invited out to perform for the live auditions for Team Backpack. You also check them out, they get crazy views. Like, some of their views rack up to like 500,000. Wow. So, yeah, it's like, you. yeah, it's just, it's just like really, really good opportunity for underground artists for exposure, like myself, who don't have projects out fully. Like, um, I have stuff out, yeah, you can search me up, but you can't, you can't find my album anywhere or anything like that, right? Yeah. So, I think, uh, I think contests just, in general, are a good way to start out as an artist when you've got your projects kind of in the back burner, yeah. like, like, I have my project done, it's fully, like, I got the title, album cover, I'm literally just waiting to get in, into the booth, so, yeah. in the meanwhile, why not go expose in, like, not even in different cities, but in different countries, like, exactly, LA is a place to be. Oh yeah, take it to a whole new level. Like Toronto's sick and all. Like shout out Toronto, I love Toronto, but like LA is where I want to be. So yeah, that's definitely a huge bonus for me being not a nobody. I have people that know me, but not being. Slim on the boards, keeping it real all the time, man. Um, everybody, you want to hit me up on Twitter? It's Potent X Prince. Potent, as in like you got that good stinky chronic, <laughs> good potent, nice danky stink of your old house. Your mom's catch you in a minute type stuff. Uh, what else I got? I got the Instagram. Hit me up on Instagram again. Potent X Prince. Um, we got. Oh, also, if you guys go to GoFundMe.com. You can help sponsor my trip to LA. Um, it's a crazy expensive thing to do. You know, I'm working part time at a skin shop, so I'm not going to go yet. But 